we need to talk about romhacking.net, but before we do that. Oh. Oh. Backlog! 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 I have so much earwax in my left ear. I can't <laughs> hear or, or, or think straight or talk. Oh, God. Hey, guys. It's backlog time. That's How right. How you doing? Good to see you. Uh, it's backlog. This is the part of the show where we go through our entire video game collection. Every game we've ever bought gets put into an Excel spreadsheet. And today we're going to pick one at random and talk about it, regardless of whether or not we've played it. How many games do we have? 964. 964. That is seven, number 787. 787. And that is Assassin's Creed 1 for the Xbox 360. So I play Guess the Game all the time. Yes. It's Guess the Dot Game is mm -hmm. the name of the website. Uh, and it's you just guess you, you you're just guessing uh uh what game it, it's like a wordle type thing. Yeah, yeah. It shows you like a really close up zoomed in screenshot and you have to guess what the game is. And yeah. then every guess that you make, they show you a new screenshot. I want to say 50% of the time, it's an Assassin's Creed game because <laughs> there's just so many Assassin's there's Creed There's a games. lot of them. Um, and this one is the first one. So we're going back to the beginning. Uh, so two, tw 2007 released on the PS3, the Xbox 360 and Microsoft Windows. Uh, yeah. Uh, interesting game i'll say i remember when this was coming out this had all the hype in the world because this was 2007 this was you know the xbox 360 had been out for two years the ps3 has been out for one year this was like touted as the first real next gen game it's the spiritual successor to prince of persia which everybody loved um and like when it came out it delivered but i think people slowly realized like it could have been better, you know. I do know. Yeah. Sorry, my 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 little thing is not uh, my little well switcher is not working. Um, yeah, I don't really understand because it was extremely popular, but uh, it didn't really review that great, and people didn't like it that much. <laughs> well, I think at the time it, it reviewed fairly well. I think it was only like one or two publications like gave it a bad review, and that and then you know people like came after them for it. But I think slowly over time, people started to realize like the game isn't very polished. The controls are clunky. It got um, an 81. That's not so yeah, bad. Yeah, that's pretty good. And then it was a situation where like when Assassin's Creed 2 came out, they're like, oh, this is much better. <laughs> yeah, this was not a great game. Yeah. But I remember enjoying it for the most part. I would have given it like a 7 out of 10. Yeah. Because I stopped playing towards the end of the game. I stopped playing. And then when the second one was coming out. Yeah. I finished it. Yeah. Uh, and I enjoyed what I played, but the beginning's cool and the end's cool. The middle is very boring. <laughs> it's the same thing over and over yeah. and over again. There's not a lot of good mission variety. There's no story um, at all in the middle. The controls are like very like cumbersome. They didn't really like refine it until like the next game and the game after that. Um, the, the story was actually pretty shocking because, spoiler alert, uh, the whole marketing campaign was built around you're an assassin um in uh where did, when did, where did this game take place somewhere in the middle east right yes uh, you're an assassin uh the game takes place in 1191 so it's well in the past it's very like well researched um it takes place in the middle east and like places like jerusalem um and i liked that because it was yeah. a, it was very different for the time yeah uh to have a game set in that way in, yeah. that, in that time period in, the, in that area it was just uh look at how gray it is it was like yeah. pretty boring the, the architecture wasn't it was all the same it was all these broken down stone buildings right. but the twist came like right at the beginning you find out that it actually takes place uh in the present in 2012 uh you play some doofus named desmond miles and what they're actually doing is in the future this company is like scanning your brain to look at the memories of your ancestors to try and solve a mystery well they tell you that in the very beginning yeah of the game. That, but uh, what the i'm saying opens is opens with that they didn't market that at all oh yeah, yeah so yeah. like it caught people completely off guard that like this cool little assassin story is really just the you know, window dressing for the real story where 
Uh, Bob lost the screen, so I don't know what's going on right now. Everything, <laughs> everything's a disaster yeah. right now. Uh, it's the storm and GameStop. So yeah, <laughs> it was this really weird tw- twist that like threw a lot of people off guard. A lot of people hated it. A lot of people loved it. I am mixed on it. Uh, um, Again, I at the liked time I for just the wa- most part. I just wanted to do the cool assassin stuff. Yeah, uh, I also enjoyed the cool assassin stuff. Yeah, I kind of really liked the Desmond story. A lot of people didn't, and they just wanted to play the game. Yeah, but I enjoyed uh, the 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 parts where you got sucked back to the present day, uh, and that story, the Desmond story, continued on to the second game. Right. Well, I think in this one, the Desmond story, like it was literally, you know, you'd wake up on the Animus, um, you'd go to bed. And then you wake up the next day and lay on the animus. Like you didn't do anything yeah. aside from just sit there and listen to dialogue from Kristen Bell and the other guy. Yeah, but like I was always interested in that part. Like, like, like the I wanted to play the game more to hear more about that part of the right. story. Uh, I don't think that really did much for me in this game like it yeah. did for the second uh and, and yeah because it got the better, and better series yeah. of games i think it also didn't help that like the assassin you play in this altair like he wasn't very charismatic he wasn't very you know interesting he was there very no, much a flat figure there were no good characters in this game this yeah. game was very bland uh yeah for what it was i mean i think at the time there just weren't a lot of games uh yeah well again this was the beginning of the generation yeah this was xbox 360 this was like the first one to like really be like a next gen game because like it was a big open world all the people walking around the amount of detail and like the textures yeah it looks really good for xbox for especially an early xbox 360 game but uh it's just the colors are bland yeah And, and and the architecture is all the same uh also like it takes place in the 1100s yeah uh why are all of the buildings already rubble? <laughs> you know? I mean, it's like our memory of like what. That's what I'm yeah. saying. Like they shouldn't, it shouldn't look like this. It should look better. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we're saying the game is bland. Like there were fun parts to it. Like sneaking around on top of buildings, doing the parkour stuff to like get away from uh, guards and outrun them. Yeah. Luckily uh, the actually, gameplay loop was fun. actually planning assassinations and stuff like hiding in the crowd and like trying to like listen to like where your target's going to be. All that stuff was very fun. Yeah. This pioneered a lot of great stuff. It yeah. was very different, especially at the time. And a lot of games ended up stealing from this, especially a lot of Ubisoft. Games. Yeah. This... We're looking right now at you climbing a tower yep. to unlock part of the map. Yeah. This is the original Ubisoft game. Yeah. Not the original Ubisoft game, but like the original modern day Ubisoft game. Is this game. the first game you climb a tower to unlock the map? <sighs> I the think f- it might be. I think so. There's a word for that type of gameplay. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what the word is, but I remember researching this before. And there is, a, <laughs> there is like a Wikipedia page right. for uh, this, this style of gameplay. Mm-hmm. But anyway, uh, I'm glad this game exists because I do like some of the Assassin's Creed yeah. games. Uh, I think that uh, Assassin's Creed 2 is where it really got Yeah, Assassin's good. Creed 2. Like, uh, Assassin's Creed 2 is the game. You know, it's yeah. like sometimes with a video game series, the first one doesn't click, but the second one clicks and clicks hard. Like Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Um, Mega Man 2, Assassin's Creed 2, Street Fighter 2, like Assassin's Creed 2 is that game for this series. Yeah. Uh so I'm glad it exists. Yeah. Uh when did this come out? Uh November 2007. 2007. Yeah. So this style of combat also was uh I don't want to say um I always attributed this style of combat to uh to to Assassin's Creed. Yeah. But a lot of games ended up taking this style of combat. Yeah, I know you compare it a lot to the Arkham style of combat. I'm bringing up Arkham because I wanted to see when it came out. It was 2009. Yeah. I mean, the Arkham combat is a lot much more faster. It's a yeah, it's, it's much more fluid. Definitely the, not a one to one. The combat in this one like it's definitely much like it's very counter heavy, but like it's much more slow and like yeah. timing based and like you have to actually sit there and like wait whereas in Arkham it's like much snappier. Yeah. 
You know, this I think this tried to replicate the feel of an actual sword fight rather than like trying to just beat the shit out of somebody as fast as you can. Yeah, but even at the time there weren't a lot of games that were doing this where yeah. where uh you uh punch 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 and then like like you press attack, press attack, press attack and then you press dodge or parry yeah. and, uh, when 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 uh, a shape appears over their head, yeah. a parry shape. Um Plus, I feel like they kind of made the combat in this game, like, intentionally bad. Because a lot of stealth games at the time were, like would make their combat intentionally bad so that yeah. you don't engage in combat. You find other ways to solve your problems. Because, like, the big thing about this game, like, part of the marketing was the hidden blade. Which was, you know, the blade on your wrist that would shoot out so you can, like, sneakily stab a guy. And this game, there weren't a lot of use cases for, like, it was very limited. It was really, you had to sneak up behind somebody and stab them or, like, jump off of something high and stab them. You couldn't do it in combat. You couldn't do it by, like, just walking past them like you can in Assassin's Creed 2. Mm -hmm. So, like, even, like, the marquee feature of the game was, like, severely limited in what you can do with it. Yeah, it was Assassin's Creed 2 where the combat got really good. In yeah. this, you can see when you counter, it does a cutscene. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's a little. I mean strange. that that kind of like stayed with throughout the series, but like it it just felt like felt wrong in this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, it's hard to recommend this game in particular. Yeah. Uh, someone in the chat was like, "Why haven't they remade this game?" Honestly, this is the game to remake if they're going to remake yeah. an Assassin's Creed game. I know Ezio is like their their. He's their the more famous one. Yeah. Their favorite uh character to mm -hmm. to to do stuff with. But uh, this game, I think, desperately needs a remake. And, and they've, like, toyed around with, like, uh, this game. Like, they've had this character in other games yeah. before. Um, but I think Assassin's Creed Mirage is, like, the closest you're going to get to, like, them dipping their toes back into this game. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, it's hard to recommend because it's not nearly as good as, like, the other stuff. It's not as fleshed out. But, uh, yeah. It served its purpose. It opened the door. It, it, it did uh, have a lot in it that worked well, and it paved the way for some iteration that worked a little better mm -hmm. later on. So yeah, thanks for watching the backlog, everybody. Oh, wait, did this game give us a red ring of death? No, the second one did. Second one. Second one. We got a lot to say about the second one. <laughs> thanks for watching the backlog, everybody. Uh, come to a podcast sometime. We'll see you later. Goodbye. Bye.